AB is equal to OB. Take away OA. This is the most important number one formula for vectors that you would meet. formula is called the triangle law. Let me show you where it comes from. Let's suppose I have a y-axis and an x-axis and I have a vector liming like this from two points A and B and I want to know vector AB but I don't know vector AB. How would I be able to find out vector AB? How do I find out vector AB? I will use the triangle law. So in this case, we would be given the coordinates of A and we'd be given the coordinates of B. Let's make up some coordinates. 2, 6, 7, 3. So this is the fun part now. If I want to find A, B, instead of going A to B, I can go from A down the triangle to O, which we know is the origin, and go up to B. Because you see, it doesn't matter which direction I take. Once I leave and I end up on B, I would have created the vector AB. So I am saying AB is the same as AO, that's this vector coming here, plus OB. It's the same as if I went AO, then OB. AB is the same as that. Now, you should know that AO is really negative OA. If I turn it around, it's just the negative. It's the negative inverse. So AB is equal to negative OA plus OB. And let's just write this over to make it look a little more sweet. OB first and put the negative sign in the middle with OA coming right after. And voila, we have the triangle law there. So let's solve this question just for kicks using the triangle law. AB would be equal to... O, B, 7, 3. Take away O, A, 2, 6. It turns out that A, B is going to be 7 take away 2 is 5, 3 take away 6 is negative 3. So it means the vector A, B is going across by 5 and then dipping down by 3. One last quick tip with the triangle law. It doesn't always come as A, B. It can come as P, Q. This will simply be OQ, take away OP. It can come as MN, I'm just making up stuff now. Which will be ON, take away OM. It can come as box triangle, which will be O triangle, take away O box. So in other words, you always start off with the second letter, second term, take away the first term. So the second position vector, take away there first position vector. Alright, enough on that. Let's introduce a second formula. These signs may look familiar to you. They are called the modular sign and we can use them in matrices to talk about determinant. But when we use them in vectors, we are talking about magnitude. Alright, so let me give you a little quick illustration of how this can be used. Let's say we have a vector that's running from A to B up there and let's say we know what vector AB is. Vector AB is equal to, let's make it 3, 4. And we want to find out what is the actual length or magnitude of vector AB. This is where this comes into play. So if we want to find out how long vector AB is, we will come now and say the magnitude of AB is equal to the square root of x squared. 3 squared plus 4 squared. 3 squared plus 4 squared, that's 9 plus 16. That's the square root of 25. So it means this vector is 5 units long. Just one quick insight on this rule that you should know to help you remember it. It's taken from Pythagoras theorem. So remember if we had a right angle triangle and we have C, A and B. Pythagoras theorem says c squared is equal to a squared plus b squared. So c would be equal to the square root of a squared plus b squared, which is basically what we are seeing here, 
in this case A represents X, B represents Y and C represents the magnitude of the vector. The third rule I want to introduce you to is just a little concept. Say we have A, B as a vector and we want to find a midpoint and this is common. Sometimes they'll ask you for a midpoint or they'll ask you for a one third of the way along the vector but let's use midpoint. So I want AM. AM is simply half of AB. It sounds simple right but in the exam sometimes you wouldn't figure it out. So let's say AB was AB looking like what? 5 go down 1? Nah. Maybe about, yeah, okay, 5 and we went down 1. So AM is going to be half of 5 and half of negative 1. So that's going to be, let's just put both of them over 2. Hopefully you can see that there. I'm kind of squeezing, I'm running out of space. So AM is going to be half of that. So you can just put these two numbers over 2 to represent half of it. So these are the three main formulas, three main rules, but I want to introduce you to two concepts quickly before we wrap up this video. Two concepts that with a lot of marks at the ending of a vector question they like to ask you these things so they could ask you one to show that vectors are parallel two vectors are parallel so they, here's an example a and b and the reason that you are going to give is that they are related by a scalar factor and you will show how use this word scalar factor sounds nicer eh? all right so a and b show that these vectors are parallel well you simply show that b is equal to 2a can you see that that's the scalar factor and this scalar factor could be a fraction as well so after you've written this you will write b is related to a by the scalar factor of 2 and you will collect two marks the second thing that they can ask is very similar they can ask to show that it is collinear or collinear collinear means they lie on the same line for example a to b to c So show that AB is collinear to BC. To do this, firstly we'll have to show that AB and BC are parallel using what I just showed you. And then you'll show that they share a common point. The common point they share is B. That will show that they lie on the same line. And you'll do that and you'll collect two to three marks. So I think that's enough tips and theory for vectors. In the next video, I will do some past papers on the topic of vectors. Till then, Keep grinding.